Something DCS itself won't teach you is the center of gravity or CG of your airframe. How that shifts and affects your aircraft's attitude and your impulse needed. I'm going to cover what it is, demonstrate CG shifts in the Car 50, then contrast that with the Mi 24 and finish up with the AH 64. First up, I'm not going to sugarcoat clickbait this and say it's something you need to know or else you will crash and explode. Real life piloting? Sure. DCSing? It's interesting. Secondly, I don't know the performance data on the car 50 and haven't dug up the dash 10 or such comparing real life performance. That's beyond my scope. Here. This is purely DCS. My tests might include some autopilot flight control systems influence and occasionally some imperfect trimming or guesswork on the cyclic position. I'm giving ideas of how your DCS loadout might change things and explain some things that might have been niggling in the back of your skull. So center of gravity or CG. I'm not going to the whole thing of should it technically be center of mass, but the FA and most other manuals refer to it as CG, so I'll run with that. One simple, probably dumbed down, explanation is it's where the mass appears to be concentrated, where it tends to balance if it were in normal, closer to Earth gravity. If you slung your unpowered helicopter under one sturdy chain, it would swing around so that CG lands roughly beneath the chain suspending it. Since your helicopter hangs off the lift produced by the rotor disc or discs, that acts like a chain in this description. Usually the center of gravity will be close-ish to the rotor hub, too far forwards or backwards and can cause issues and leave the pilot without control authority to push the cyclic in the direction they need. On a super light helicopter, for example, even the weight of one more person in the cabin seat up front can have a significant effect on shifting this CG balance. Practical example of how you can shift the CG. Here's a Car 50 hovering with an example lateral datum. It's pretty balanced, so it hovers with the wings level. I'm not blending in translating tendency from tail rotors or the tail rotor angle, and this is wind still, no turbulence, in a harbor. I'll get to forward flight later. Now, I packed 1.5 tons of weight on the right wing. That's going to add a lot of mass on the right, causing the center of gravity shift towards the right. This shift acts like a pendulum, and the new shifted CG wants to swing in beneath the rotor rub it's suspended from and now I'm hovering with the right wing low. To note is also the distance or moment arm of the weight from the center of gravity. Further away you're adding the weight the greater effect on the CG. On this 10 ton helicopter putting an S8 KOM, one of the lighter rocket pods, on the inner versus the outer pylon isn't really noticeable. But with these almost 780 kg KMGU dispensers, the bank is much stronger on the outer pylon compared to the inner. This level of bank makes you careen off to that side when you take off if you're not careful. And even the hover hold isn't always that great compensating for this extreme. It also means that when I have leveled out, I've got a lot less control to the left should I need more left for some reason. This reduction of control and the change in balance of course also affects your fore and aft CG and thus your pitch. On the Car 50 the Rotomaster is angled maybe almost 5 degrees forwards. You can see the fuselage on the ground is pretty level, the front gear isn't pitching the nose up on the ground but the rotor hub is tilted forward just a bit. Mostly that means in forward flight the components take less strain. Maybe it also alleviates the fast forward flight's pitch down angle a little, along with the tail stabs. The center of gravity on the Car 50, I'd guess to usually be somewhere about here-ish. So when I get weight of wheels and take off from a hover, that CG, slightly aft, wants to swing forwards to underneath the rotor hub. Give or take a few other variables. Hence the Car 50, harbors usually with the nose pitched up a little. 
CG isn't the only thing determining a hover pitch, but it is a contributor. For the most part, the shark's options for loading up ammunition and fuel is very central. There are CG shifts, but they are somewhat demure. Here are some numbers for reference. As you add weight on the front of the aircraft, the CG shifts forwards. This means the new position of the CG makes it want to swivel backwards, pitching the nose down and requiring relatively a little more back stick on the cyclic to remain in the harbor, for example. While the fuel tanks probably are very central, possibly right before and aft of the transmission, there's a very slight CG shift forwards when you're low on fuel. I've included not just the fuselage pitch, but also the angle of attack or AOA, since in this wind still no turbulence zero airspeed example, the AOA is kind of the pitch, just with an extra decimal. I'm not saying you're going to feel a 0.3 degree pitch change in the sim, but just to paint the picture of how the CG shifts and your pitch changes relatively based on some of your choices. Since doing this in a hot start, the 10% fuel tanks are perfectly level, as if they've been running the cross speed, I guess. For the shark, I also had it run out the fuel from max. Ignoring anomalous measuring errors on my tests, it's still about 0.3 degree shift forwards from full fuel to fumes, which agrees with the difference in the super light tests. Anyway, internal fuel is a lesser influence than the car 50 so you won't have to change cyclic much from the fuel burn. It would need to move the cyclic slightly back, but that said on a long straight ferry flight, if you keep your collective the same, the reduction in weight from the fuel burn would mean a little more forward cyclic and speed up would be needed to prevent you starting to climb. Your cannon ammo is loaded in the left under the wing and expanded under the right wing. So having not having it or expending it during the flight is a non-factor for the CG shifts. Your wings are mounted very centrally off the core transmission blocks block, shielding the engines a bit from harm like the engines shield the transmission. That said, the way each weapon mounts on the pylon is slightly different, which can result in a shift in CG. And of course, launching a 360 kg KH-25ML missile off the outer pylon is immediately going to shift your CG laterally in a very big way. Again for the forward backward shifts in the shark, as you can see they're very subtle. An extreme loadout of two tons of the big Fab 500 bombs will drag the CG further back. I'd guess more of the bomb's weight is condensed near the tail in the way it's mounted on the pylon. This means in a harbor with the nose pitched up higher and a little more forward cyclic needed for that harbor. S13s and KMGs seem to push the CG forwards. So if you've packed Vickers and S13s and you're wondering why your hover position has the datum and the HUD closer to that 5 degree pitch up mark rather than above it, that's mostly the S13s talking. Remember, as you expand munitions, depending on if the container remains, the majority or all of the weight will leave your pylon or internal bay, moving the fore, aft, and lateral center of gravity. Some of these examples are obviously extreme loadouts with specific ordnance maxed out, but for the most part, it will only be a factor if you're finding that out of ground effect hover position on the HUD and wondering why wind excluded it's slightly higher or lower than you'd normally expect. Let's contrast that with the hind. The rotor has a 4.5 degree forward tilt. Don't be fooled by the gear when they add the side there to lengthen the nose gear to give more clearance. From the ground you would to study the features. Yes, the hind's cockpit is slightly skewed to make it more comfortable in certain modes of flight and the rear gear isn't quite symmetrical laterally. Not, we're not focusing on that right now. What I will expand on is the rotor pitch. Given the similar forward tilt to the other helos, but the fact that without wing pylons, it hovers level instead of nose high, it might imply the center of gravity in cleaner loadouts is much further forwards than the other two helos. 
This would be the rotor mass perpendicular to the fuselage. This is 4.5 degrees tilt forwards. Coning aside, this would be the rotor disc or tip path plane perpendicular to that. No wind or turbulence here and my cyclic is completely neutral and centered. Once the first engine spools up and then more so with the second engine and upping the throttles, the blades stretch out as you'd expect. But the disc pitches forward significantly further. My guess is the cyclic's been rigged to be further forwards than you think. I need to pull back cyclic by 30% for the disc to level out and become perpendicular with the rotor mast. Combined with what might be forward CG, you need to pull back quite a bit to get the cyclic into a level with the ground harbor angle. So it'll start taxing and flying forwards with much less forward stick needed, but you have much less ability to pull back on the cyclic. Though usually you might not want to get the hind into fast backwards flight or cobraing intentionally. Depending on where people and loads in the cabin go, it's either near the CG or slightly ahead. The wings mounting pylons are a little bit further back. And since it has a tail rotor, you need to counter that translating tendency, pushing you sideways, which means a little bit of a bank during the hover. Just note for the Heine and Apache, the air indication blends in a bit of bank as well. So it might not be as accurate an indicator purely of pitch as it was with the shock example. Cannon rounds are stored up front on the right side. I did not find removing them affected the left right stick input needed, but it does shift the CG a bit back. The primary fuel tanks are beneath the cabin, with the other three tanks just behind that. Going from 10% fuel to 30%, there's also a slight shift aft. At that point, it's pretty much the tanks 1 and 2 that store the fuel. With full internal fuel and not much else, it harbors almost level pitch. As soon as you start adding things to the wings, the center of gravity shifts back, making it harbor a few degrees nose high. Taking maximum S8 KOMs, KMG dispensers, and especially the fab bombs, does this the most. Now the Apache also has a fairly centered layout. Rotor canted forward 5 degrees, and the normal resting position on the ground happens to be 5 degrees, so the rotor in that example looks level while spun up on the ground. In addition to just feeding it out, or calculating it based on some of the other examples, or if you go look up the actual tables, your perf page shows your CG status, or at least how far forwards or aft it is from the neutral in inches. It seems to harbor 6 degrees nose up until you get anything on the wings and then it's 5 degrees. So very, very subtle shifts. Having high or low fuel, the FCR, Robbie tank versus 1,200 rounds, none of those factors seem to change it in any significant way. It's really just having stuff on the wing pylons makes it 5 degrees. Now, all of my examples as yet have been done from a harbor. When you start gaining airspeed, some other factors come in. Like, for example, the horizontal stabs and possibly the larger wing shapes. Getting airflow and it will guide the airframe in a certain way. Usually the horizontal stabs will pull the nose up a little more level. So you don't sit at an extreme pitch falling forwards out of your seat when you've gained speed, amongst other factors. In reverse flight, the horizontal stabs might not be that good a feature. Point is, CG shifts will affect pretty much all your flight regimes, but at certain airspeeds, other features come in to have a greater effect, and it's no longer as big a thing as during a harbor say. And if you get a large wing or one of the horizontal stabs shot off, or lose a tail in a shock, things are of course going to get more complicated. So if you ever find yourself very strongly banking to one side after taking damage, maybe you lost the wing with a lot of ordnance. Or, of course, could also be something on your tail stabs missing. I loosely checked forwards flight for each helo, around 200 kph-ish. 
each with only the extreme examples from earlier, as in most forward versus most aft CG, to demonstrate how it changes in forward flight. On the shark, between an ultralight aerobatics loadout and a ludicrous almost 3.8 tons of ordnance full fuel layout, it varies between 0 and minus 1 degrees pitch. The Apache, from a pure cannon fuel and FCR loadout to fuel bags, Hellfire's 9.7 ton total weight, it went from 0 to minus 1 degree pitch. So also very subtle differences there. As expected, the Hind gets more interesting. The chunky Fab 250 and Fab 500 11.4 ton total weight flew about 230 kph at 0 degrees pitch. Whereas an ultra light without wing pylons, but full cannon ammo, was doing that speed at minus six degrees pitch. Remember that at larger pitch angles, your Doppler and automatic impact point calculations won't work. So take note of that on these super light loadouts if you start diving. So, Shark Harbor, maybe six to seven degrees, cruises fast at level pitch. Apache harbors five to six degrees cruises level pitch, hind harbors level in loadouts without wing pylons, and then cruises with a negative pitch, while it harbors nose up maybe 3 degrees, and then cruises more level in pitch with wing pylons. On the Car 50, wing pylons will typically shift your CG forwards, and nose harbor lower 1 degree. A lot of S13s and Kemjus will do it the most, a lot of Fab 500s will actually shift the CG back, making a harvest slightly more pitch up. Very subtle, usually. On the Apache, everything's within one degree-ish. Slightly CG forwards with the wing pylons, both in harbor and forwards flight. On the hind, wing pylons shifted back two to three degrees, except for maximum Fab loadouts shift back almost five. I've shown some cases of combat loadouts. You can imagine a heavy thing in the back of a Chinook or a Mi-26 would cause some significant shifts. And you can imagine if your sling load beneath the aircraft was swinging around, how that affects your center of gravity. Or how attaching a sling load to your skid or having someone hang off a skid instead of central positions, how that affects the center of gravity especially if that weight is a significant part of a helicopter's mass. So, some more stuff to consider when choosing a loadout and what to be prepared for when you take off. And notice while you're expending munitions and fuel during a flight. Not all changes in bank pitch are from center of gravity changes, but hopefully you now know how that contributes towards the hull. And as said, not all my tests are 100% perfect numbers, and my explanations on the physics behind it probably are terrible. This is Volk. Keep on swinging.